Hello, today I want to talk about the SEC names rule. Now, I do have another video out there where I talk about the history of the names rule. It has changed over time. You can watch that video if you follow this link right here. Today, I want to think about the names rule in the context of sustainable investing. First, to refresh your memory, the current rendition of the names rule is part of the Investment Companies Act of 1940, specifically in Section 35D. Now, they started kind of changing what they were going to do here in February of 1997, and finally fully implemented that in January of 2001. One of the things they changed was going from a 65% rule to an 85% rule. And what that means is, you know, if you put in the name, the asset class you're investing in, you know, the industry you're investing in, the region in terms of the globe you're investing in or a specific company, then that needs to match what's in the fund. And so that means if you say you are a stock fund, then 80% of the assets under management must be in stock. So that's what that rule tells you. But what it doesn't tell you is that what you have to do in terms of an investment objective. So if you say, hey, you're a, you're a capital appreciation fund, you know, you're know, you an inflation hedge, you are a low volatility fund, that naming convention is not regulated the same way that, say, a stock fund type of name would be regulated. So that's just not part of the names rule. Also, not in there would be investment strategy. So you're a value fund, you're a growth fund, you're an ESG fund, for example, again, not part of the names rule. And finally, the policy, you know, your investment policy, so the process you use, how you implement your your, your investment process, et cetera, that's also not part of the name rule. Now, part of the reason here is because some of these things are a little ambiguous. They might have different meanings to different people, so it's hard to enforce something that isn't agreed upon. And that's kind of where we are in terms of ESG. There isn't a universal definition. It is a bit elusive. And maybe you know every person has their own idea of what that means. So as an investor, I will invest in an ESG fund thinking one thing, and the actual managers think a different thing. And so there's a mismatch there. Uh, you can think about sustainable investing in at least three different baskets. There's socially responsible investing, and that would be kind of the X sin types of stocks. So you exclude guns, you exclude whatever it is you want to exclude. There's the environmental, social, and governance, or the ESG method, where you say, well, hey, I'm going to invest in all these different industries, but I'm going to take the best companies in terms of how they deal with environmental, social, and governance issues. There's also impact investing, where we think about, hey, not only do I want an investment return, I might even be willing to give up some of that investment return as long as I'm making a true impact on the globe or whatever your issue is. Now, I have some videos where I talk about this or these different styles of sustainable investing in more detail. You can watch those videos if you follow these links right here. Well, now the SEC is getting involved. They're thinking about this debate. So March 2nd, 2020, they said, hey, we want your opinion. Tell us what you think about how the named rule should be you know, enforced or used when it comes to sustainable investing. September 16th, 2020, they updated that and said, hey, we're, we're thinking about different ways we could enforce this if we have some rules. We could be kind of, kind of weak enforcement route to up to really strong enforcement. Again, they weren't proposing a particular idea there. They were just saying, look, these are different ways we could deal with it. Finally here, very recently, April 2021, they put out a publication out there and said, look, you know, we are definitely seeing things where, you know, names are being used and it really doesn't reflect what's in that investment strategy. So part of the problem here is that right now in terms of inflows, new money coming into mutual funds and ETFs, 25% of that is going into some kind of su sustainable investing, or at least an investment that is labeled as sustainable investing. And the problem here is, well, is that good for investors? Because they're marketing these sustainable investment products as something new, but they're not really new. The thing is, it's the same old thing they've always been doing. They've just slapped a new label on there saying, hey, this is actually an ESG product. And for you as an investor, by getting the two new labels there, what you're really getting is higher fees. So same old investment, higher fees, not the best situation for investors. So the SEC is getting involved and asking for industry participa participation in that process. So that's just something to think about. We'll see what the SEC ultimately does here. I think they're going to have some action out there. There's going to be some kind of new rule at some point in time. Obviously, it's taken a little while here. That's it for today. Happy trading out there. As always, I'm Brian Kozlowski. And please, please, please subscribe. Please give this a thumbs up. It really does matter. Thank you so much.